Okay, I want to do a quick recap on the what we've done on the lock before we get into the project today. Now, I roughed in this cut with just a hacksaw blade, but I come back with a sawzall blade, a metal sawzall blade, and I made that notch wider. This one here was done with two hacksaw blades stacked right next to each other, but that was fiddly. A sawzall blade gave me the same result, cleaner and less fiddly. I didn't like the, my solder job, so I, I redid it. I brazed some copper in there. You can see a little bit of it there and there where I filed it off. I peened this over under heat, and I did some peening here and here to push out some divots in the, the frizzing. I used a special chisel that we'll use later, and I added these teeth to help gra grasp leather. And I center punched, and I punched this for the hole that we're going to drill for our top jaw, or for the screw that's going to hold the top jaw on. I trued this up, made it constant, I think it was 7 millimeter it come out to be. Yeah, there's that. We oh, and I, I, I cut the notch that's gonna hold the spring. Uh, the spring's gonna come up. It's gonna have a little hook here. Goes into this groove and do that. Now, oh, and instead of cutting on this, this nut I made, I made a washer to go in there. To help kind of ghost the lock instead of hang, having all this surface area in contact. Now I only have the surface area of the washer in contact to provide friction. I'm thinking about doing the same thing with this, but this is pretty smooth. I still got to curve this, harden this, and uh, I think I'm going to cut about that much off of it I know we'll see when I get the top jaw made now we're turning once again to our humble friend the railroad spike to make the top jaw I'm aiming for about a quarter inch thick this against here we need to go a little wider yet okay now that we have the top jaw formed to shape we're going to use this square punch here to make a slot a hole a square hole in it to get the uh, slot started Marked out pretty well, and I will punch this. Okay, here's the chisel we're going to use to make the teeth. Just forged out of a piece of leaf spring, but it's completely flat here. Completely flat, and it's got a bevel on this side and a bevel on this side and the very tip is 60 degrees so flat on top beveled on both sides on the bottom and then the very tip 60 degrees Start digging straight down and then working it back. And then to help pronounce the tooth, I flip it over, give it a couple taps.
Notice how I'm giving it light taps. I'm not killing it. I'm going to heat this up to finish it. And hopefully you can see those teeth that we put in there now. I'm going to do one more row. Scratch out here is the importance of checking your work. Putting that right there. Tells me that is the last row that I want. Cut it off here. And cut it off right there. Okay, so here it is. Fresh out of the quench. We just hacksawed the ends off. Let's see our teeth. They don't got to be sharp, just bumps to grab onto the leather. Gonna need some file filing to fit. But, see that will suit our purposes pretty well. I think I'll drill this and stick a nub of pencil in there, put this on top once it's fitting right. That'll give me where I need to mark or where I need to drill on this top jaw here. Okay, we got the hole drilled in the bottom and the bottom jaw. We got the slot fitted and the hole drilled for the top. They line up perfectly. Now I just need to tap the bottom, bottom jaw. And I should note that the hole in the top jaw is, is gonna be bigger than the one you drill in the bottom jaw because a smooth shank has to pass through the top jaw. You don't want the top jaw threaded. But I'm going to finish tapping this and then we will forge the screw that goes through the top jaw and threads into the bottom jaw. We get to make the top screw and start with some half inch round bar. And I'm just rounding up the top. And we will put it in the rounding dies to make a fuller, and then the butcher dies to make a flat, and the flat dies to draw out the shank. If that makes any sense. Okay, right, so we got the rounding dies in here. And here you can see we have a ball started. I'm going to refine the ball a little bit and then we'll butcher it right here to make a flange to sit on top of that top jaw. We got that warm. This is opportunity to clean it up a little bit. Okay, I got the butcher dies in here. As you can see that the butcher die creates a nice shoulder. On one side, nice flat shoulder on this side and a tapered section on this side, which you can use to draw down material without leaving any cold shuts that will cause fractures later on. Okay, we got the flat die in here. 
I'm gonna use that. To swage down right up next to this transition. Then we can do the rest freehand on the end without worry of uh, screwing up our finial. This is going to take a few heats, but you can see how we're gradually necking it down. I got the shank of the screw forged. Now straighten it out in the vise. Okay. Well, hopefully, here you can see. Now, I will thread this probably up to about a half inch from the bottom of this. I'll make sure this flange is nice and flat. I'll drill a hole through this ball. That's for me to pass a rod through so I can tighten it. Tighten the uh, top jaw down on the bottom.